so as you can tell by my accent, I was raised in America. I was born in Chicago and went to New York when I was 18 to study at the Juilliard School. I did not come from a musical family. Growing up, my mom did listen to classical music with me, so I do remember very clearly having that exposure. But she was actually a visual artist. Um, she painted when she was younger. And so the culture that I was exposed to, I feel lucky to have had that. And my dad sold refrigerators and microwaves for a living, so not musical. I came to the viola actually by chance when I was about 10 years old in public school in Chicago. My goal actually was to play the trumpet. I'd always wanted to play the trumpet, but that was offered one year later. And so I thought I would just, you know, get a head start learning to read music. And because of my goal to switch to the trumpet, I didn't actually care which string instrument they gave me. And they said, well, if you don't care, you have to play viola because nobody wants viola. I just remember so clearly within one week proclaiming to my family that this is what I was going to do with the rest of my life. What interested me the most from the beginning was that it was something I could put my excess energy into. As a kid, I wasn't the best behaved. I didn't get along with people so much. I think I was just frustrated at school. And as soon as I started viola, I had something to look forward to every day, something to pour all of that excess energy into. It just became the thing that I did. And everybody knew me as the person who played viola. So you could say that I was a nerd immediately about it. Spending time in Kronberg was really interesting for me, especially as somebody who lives in New York. I kept my place in New York while I studied here, and I actually treasured coming to a small German village to work because not only is a lot of the music we play Germanic, and it feels just great to play things like Brahms here and learn about them here, but you really feel like you have the space and time to breathe and think and go on walks and be one with nature. Coming back to Kronberg as an alum is really special because of course all the memories came flooding back of when I was playing not only for my idol, Tabea Zimmerman, my teacher and idol, but for people like Daniel Barenboim and Gidon Kramer and Sir Andra Schiff and the people that come through here are literal giants in the field. And I can say that I have not only met them, but played for them and sometimes even with them because of Kronberg. And so, of course, that is what I remember the most. Most of the music we play, that we consider classical music from a certain time period was kind of composed here. I think there is a greater tradition of things here. There's kind of an infectious seriousness about the study and performing aspects of classical music that I am honestly totally inspired by. It feels like what you're doing is so important here, and I love that. And in America, it's great too. It's just different. It's a little bit more Hollywood, <laughs> if you will, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the same music, but it's maybe a little bit dressed up a little more. I think to, to really hone in on the fact that music is something for our souls, it's something that adds a depth and definition to our lives because it really is like chicken soup for the soul or something. If there's a day I don't practice, I'm grumpy, you know? And sometimes I'm grumpy that I have to practice because I don't want to, but I always feel better. It just awakens your soul somehow. What a privilege it is that we get to do this, isn't it? The message that we send with music is undeniable and also shouldn't be sacrificed ever. Where we could probably be better at is the transmission of 
the culture of classical music. And what I mean by that is, you know, I think for a long time it was considered a status symbol or for rich people. And that's just not the way the world works anymore. It's all about inclusion and diversity. I think it, wherever you are in the world, all you have to do is invite people. I'm sure nine out of 10 will think, wow, that's so awesome. I'm so glad I came. But they just don't often know that they have that option to come. And so that's what we need to do is invite them. Everything makes me laugh. I love laughing. Sometimes when I'm performing, people are like, why are you smiling so much? I'm like, I was not aware. I just am really enjoying myself. Like I said, I'm fun loving. I love to have fun. If you think about things like glass half full or glass half empty, in my mind, there's only one choice, and that's, of course, that it's half full. New York is incredibly diverse. Manhattan is kind of what we think of when we think New York and, you know, the jackhammers and the cars honking and stuff. Actually, during the pandemic, one thing that I did a lot was bike around the city to places I had never pre previously had the time to go to. So now I feel like I know Brooklyn, I know Queens, I know Lower Manhattan. You know, if you go to Brooklyn or Queens, there are beautiful homes on tree-lined streets. Who knew? <laughs> I had a really good time exploring my city. Um, and one of the things I like to say about New York is that the second best thing about living in New York is leaving and going somewhere else. But the first best thing about living in New York is coming back. Thank you.